What's going on guys, all you here, welcome back to a brand new video. So today we have got another tier list and it is going to be the Defenders up next. And I do want to let you guys know two things before we get into it. The first thing is that you guys are going to hear the word lengthy an extreme amount of times. Lengthy is such a big thing for centre-backs and full-backs this year. So I'm probably going to say it an outrageous amount of times in this video. And the other thing I want to let you guys know is that this is my personal tier list. I understand there's going to be certain players that people disagree with. Just let me know who you think should have gone higher or lower in the comment section but yeah let's get into it starting off with in form tomori he's an absolute beast this year i'll be honest his gold card would have gone in the s tier so he's in form definitely is going to go into the s tier as well scrinia love scrinia this year i don't think he's as good as tomori i'll say that straight up but i think scrinia is a very solid center back love his tackling ability i'm gonna put him into the a plus tier gomez in form gomez i like in form gomez once again, though, is he as good as Tomori? No, he isn't as good as Tomori. I'm going to put Gomez in the A plus tier. Mbembe's all right. Like, tackling-wise, he goes in very strong, and his physicals are nice to work with as well. Do I believe he's on the same level as Gomez, Skriniar, though? Nah, I think he deserves to go A tier. I wouldn't put this card in the A+. As I said, though, he goes in very strong into tackles. He just, I don't think he's as good as those two in the A+. Uh, Hakimi, love him as a fullback this year. Pace is just straight up ridiculous. Feels nice on the ball. Tackling is incredible. I'm definitely going to put Hakimi in the S tier. Ruben Diaz, tackling-wise, insane. Physicals as well, very, very good. But the pace something you could definitely feel like yeah he has got lengthy which kind of saves him in uh, some situations but for me personally i do believe mbemba is better than ruben diaz so ruben diaz is going to be our first b plus tier card Kanate, road to the knockout Kanate goes in very strong fast as well has lengthy he doesn't feel great on the ball but it's not the end of the world you know Kanate for me is going to go a plus Edema Letal, definitely, definitely an S-tier card. Just an incredible centre-back this year. Uh, Munier, defensive fullback. He's nice. Going forward, he doesn't really offer you much, right? Like, dribbling ability on Munier ain't that great. But if we're talking about a defensive right-back, you honestly do not get much better. He is disgusting in that right-back position. He goes into tackles very strong. Physicals are unreal. Pace is really good as well. I'm going to put him as a defensive right-back in the A-plus tier. PK, outrageous. I told you guys in a review, S tier. And he's going to go into the S tier once again. He's amazing. The pace is there. Tackling animations are beautiful. Yeah, PK, definitely definitely an s tier card uh the lot is all right he isn't an amazing right back he actually feels pretty decent in game on the ball it's just he ain't anything special for me personally i am taking munier over him over diego the lot so i'm putting the lot in the a tier uh klosterman i like klosterman this year i do i don't think he's an outstanding center back i don't think he's scrinier good or gomez good but I think he is a, uh, a centre-back that catches up to players very easily. And he does put in a very good tackle as well. I'm going to put Klosterman in the A tier. Posh, the guy that gets a very, very good link to Arnautovic. He's a nice centre-back. He's tall. He's fast. He gets lengthy. Uh, tackling, physicals. He really has it all to his game. But I just don't believe he's on Adair, PK or Tomori level. So I'm going to put him A+. Plus. Trent. Trent actually performs better in-game. Than what the stat says on a card. Way better. But is it as much to put him on the same level as someone like Diego Delot? No. Delot, for me personally, is better than Trent. So Trent is going to go into the B+. But as I said, he does perform better than what his stat says. Traore. I don't mind Traore this year. I don't think he's an outrageously good right back. And once again, I probably would take Munier over Traore. The thing is, though, Traore is better going forward. He definitely feels better on the ball than Munier. It's just Munier is a, an absolute beast. Uh, defensively. I'm going to put him A tier. I don't think he deserves to go into the A+, plus, but that might change near the end. That might change. Manafa. Now, they did really good with these milestone cards. I think they upgraded them really nicely. I think Manafa definitely could have had better long passing and strength as well. That would have, like, took him to a whole new level. But I do like how he feels nice on the ball. He's fast as well, and he can put in a good tackle. I think Manafa is, like, a comfortable A tier. Dodo. Mm. Five foot five. Those back stick headers cannot get covered at all. Dodo isn't shocking though. He honestly isn't. Like he's dribbling ain't great. For especially a five foot five player, you expect better dribbling. But he actually catches up the players really easily and he does put in good tackles. I'm gonna put Dodo 
in the A tier. It's just the fact that he's five foot five, right? So the back stick headers are so, so bad with him. And the, the dribbling as well. Like, how is he five foot five? And he's got that kind of dribbling. That needs to be better. So yeah, Dodo, A tier for me. Uh, Akanji. Akanji's good, but I'm not going to put him on the same level as Gomez. No shot. Gomez is 100% better than Akanji. So let's put him into the A tier. Saliba. This card came out, I think it was the first week of FIFA 23. The first week. I actually think he was, uh, he was out, but the game wasn't officially released. So, yeah, Saliba was a centre-back that I did enjoy a lot at the start. I felt like he was a very, very good centre-back, catching up the players. He's got lengthy as well. Tackling was no issue. It's just, he isn't as good as Gomez. No shot. He isn't as good as Canate. He isn't as good as Posh. Saliba is going to go into the A tier. Reese James. At the start, like right at the start, Reese James was outstanding, boys. The guy went into tackle so strong. He was fast. He can get lengthy. Uh, dribbling. That was a massive, massive issue for me, though. He's dribbling is awful. He feels so bad on the ball. There is rumors, though, of him getting an out of position card tomorrow. If he gets one, I'm going to be interested to see how his dribbling is going to feel. Obviously, upgraded. Hopefully, he does feel way, way better on the ball. Reese James, though, I am going to put him into the 80. I don't think he deserves to go any higher than that. He's a good defensive fullback, but we got a certain defensive fullback that is definitely better in the A plus tier. Alaba, 100%, boys. No question about it. S tier. Overpriced SBC, but he's an absolute beast. Quadrado. I like Quadrado a lot in this game. I love the fact that he's got five star skill moves. I love the fact that I can go forward of him really, really well. Uh, defensively, he's good, but he's not as good as someone like uh, Hakimi. I feel like Hakimi is a bit more aggressive when going in for tackles. He just like Hakimi has this like really nice presence on defense. Quadrado, he doesn't really have uh, too much of a defensive presence. It's all about really going forward with Quadrado. As I said, I like him a lot in this game, but I think there are better fullbacks, so I am going to put him into the A-plus tier. Uh, Thiago Silva, underrated. I think you're, if you're an old gen, Thiago Silva was like a, a card you could push to a side. But next gen, I like this Thiago Silva, man. Lengthy, uh, tackling animations are beautiful. I'm definitely going to put him A-plus. I think he deserves to go there. Sergio Ramos, outstanding, outstanding centre-back. The thing is with Ramos, right, it doesn't matter what card he has. Even with his gold card, his tackling animations are always broken. The biggest issue, obviously, with his gold card is the pace. The pace is horrendous, right? It's just when it got, when it comes down to putting in tackles, Ramos has always been that guy. This rule breakers card, I absolutely loved when I used him. So Ramos is gonna go into the S tier. Amazing, amazing centre back. Ooh, Wambazak is a hard one. I don't mind Wambazak in this game. I like his tackling ability. Uh, I think his pace is really solid as well. He definitely doesn't feel great on the ball, but he doesn't feel bad in the ball at all. Am I going to put him on the same level as someone like Quadrado and Munir? I think wan is very close to being on that level. Maybe once he gets the upgrade, because he'll be an 87 once he gets the upgrade, two upgrades. So he'll be an 86 first and then an 87 if uh, United do end up winning another game. So wan I am going to put him into the A tier. But once he gets the upgrade, I think he might move up into the A+. Rudiger, 100% boys, one of the best centre-backs in this game. Uh, Kunde, one of the best centre-backs in this game. I cannot believe how good Kun uh, Kunde is. I generally cannot because he's small, right? But it feels like in-game, this guy's like a six-foot-two player. Winning headers for fun. Tackling reach is incredible somehow. Kunde, I love in this game, and I'm definitely going to say he deserves to go in today, Esther. Rule Breakers is Stupinyan. I'm pretty sure that's how you say it. If I said that wrong, let me know how you say it in the comment section. Uh, I do like him as a fullback. It's just I don't like how he feels on the ball. He's dribbling with a T4 player that is 5'9". is very, very poor. So I am going to put him into the A tier because, as I said, he is still a good fullback. He can uh, catch up to a lot of players and he can put in a very good tackle. Alfonso Davis, he might have high low work crates, but as long as you have him on a stay back while attacking instruction, you should be good to go. I love Alfonso Davis in this game and that is why he's going to go into the S tier. They upgrade this card really nicely. Love the dynamic, by the way. He's got a headband on. He's got the pink, uh, pink shirt on and everything. He feels nice on the ball because he's got that high agility. Pace is incredible. Uh, defending ability, solid. He's got good physicals i think the passing is what really like kind of makes him not outstanding the passing on the card is shocking so you are going to screw up a lot of easy passes with yedlin 
and I am going to put him into the A tier because of that. Uh, Sule, six foot five, lengthy, tackling reach is incredible. Sule definitely is an A plus, A plus tier card for me. Nuno Menj, I like Nuno Menj at a start, right at the start of FIFA, but now, yeah, we got better fullbacks. Dodo's better. Uh, Traore is better, the lot's better, Wam Zaka's better. Nuno Menj, you are going to go into that B+. Plus. Uh, Gavardio, once again, at the start, I liked him. Now, we have got better centre-backs. Akanji's better, Saliba's better. Yeah, 100% there are better centre-backs than Gavardio now. I'm going to put him into the B plus tier as well. Danso, underrated, very underrated. When I saw this card, I was like, okay, uh, stats on the actual card itself looks nice. Let me see his in-game. His in-game stats? Ooh. Okay, it's the real deal. And I tried him, right? And I honestly couldn't believe how solid he was. Like, he really did impress me. I wouldn't go as far as saying, though, he's on Gomez's level, or like Sule's level, or Kanate's level. But he is a good centre-back. And if you haven't gave him a go, and he does fit into your team, keep in mind, he does get that nice link to Fafana. And is it Klaus? Has Klaus moved? No, Klaus moved to Leon, hasn't he? He used to play for that team. Anyway, uh, Danso, good centre-back. I liked him when I used him. I'm going to put him A tier. Is it Wendell? I think that's how you say it. He's a nice fullback as well. As I said, they've done well with these milestones. You know, these milestones have a good amount to offer. It's not like an insanely good card. I wouldn't put him on the fullbacks we see in the A plus tier, but I'm going to put him into the A tier. Uh, Arojo, cheap beast. That's the two words they use when you uh, look at this guy. He is incredible, isn't he? But is he S tier? This is the thing, right? Price-wise, he's an absolute bargain. Like, Rojo should probably go for at least, like, 20k min. At least. He is incredible for the price he goes for. And if you're looking for a centre-back in the La Liga and you don't want to spend too many coins, this is your guy. But he's not as good as Tomori. He's not as good as Dea Militao. He's not as good as PK, Alaba, Sergio Ramos, Rudiger. No shot. I am going to put a Rojo in the A-plus tier. Open Meccano, another card I enjoyed right at the start, literally like the first week of FIFA. I loved him in draft. Now, yeah, there's better centre-backs. There definitely is. Saliba's better, Candy's better. He, he's he's still all right. It's just, he's not A tier. I'm going to put him B-plus. Uh, Realm, Realm is nice. I think they could have done maybe a little bit better with Realm when it comes down to like long passing, but he's extremely fast and he puts in some crazy crazy tackles boys i'm gonna put realm a plus benucci benucci because he is lengthy yeah he's the real deal he's not as good as pk ramos and he's definitely not as good as players like tomori but benucci is a very very solid center back i love his tackling ability his tackling ability honestly reminds me a little bit of like chiellini's you guys know that chiellini end of an error card last uh last year he, honestly the benucci's tackling ability is kind of similar to that he just somehow always comes out with it but i, I just don't think he's as good as pk Sergio ramos and tomori i don't think he's on an s tier level so i'm gonna put him a plus robertson now you give this guy even the shadow chem style and his pace isn't insane it's not above 90 and especially Especially with these fast wingers like this early into FIFA. Yeah, you need pace down the line. And Robertson just hasn't really got an extreme amount of it. I'm going to put him into the B plus tier. I don't think he is better than the lot. I don't think he's better than wan And I don't believe he is better than Dodo. Uh, Lucas Hernandez can get lengthy. He's fast. He has got good tackling ability. And his physicals are nice as well. I definitely will say he's better than Upper Meccano. Uh Ruben Diaz has obviously a better tackling ability. But pace wise, Lucas Hernandez 100% wins. I'm going to put him A tier. Frankowski, I think is how you say it. He's on a right fullback. All right, just straight up. There's nothing like crazy about him like he has got really good pace i guess that's the thing that's crazy about him but like he isn't insanely good he's not on realms level he isn't on munez level i'm gonna put frankowski in the a tier cancelo in form cancelo no question about it i'll be honest his gold card would have gone in the same tier he's gonna go into the s tier Varane, same thing absolute joke of a center back tackling ability on Varane is just straight up amazing he always always gets onto it and it just feels like he catches up every single time as well lengthy this year even made him like more op could you imagine right could you just imagine a last year's card footy's card this year with the lengthy accelerate style it, that's it it's gg he probably would be the best center back ever like in any fifa just straight up that card this year with lengthy I cannot imagine how good it would be. But yeah, Varane Gold Card, 
definitely S tier. Uh, Sanchez actually packed him untradeable on the main account out of a 75 plus player pick. He is good. I like him. He goes in very strong into tackles. I think there's a... One thing that he definitely does slack on, and it is like the reactions. I do notice a few through balls, a few passes that are driven go past him. So yeah, that is something that isn't outstanding on him. But the way he goes into tackles and his physicals being as good as it is, I definitely will say Sanchez deserves to go A+. Navas. I like Navas this year because of this rule breaker. He's gold card. Mm, not great. But it's rule breaker, very, very good because of the physical boost they gave him. It actually feels like Navas for the first time in a very long time, actually has a physical presence. I'm going to put him A+. Plus. I like him in that fullback position. Rule Breaker's Godfrey now. He is an insanely, insanely good tackler. It feels like every time he's going into tackles, it's aggressive. He feels like he's uh, going in very strong, making sure he comes out with the ball. I like Godfrey in this game. I think he is an outstanding centre-back, and I am going to put him into the A-plus tier. Klaus. Klaus is all right. I don't mind Klaus. I don't think he's insane. I don't think he's Quadrado good. I don't think he's Ram good either. So I'm just going to slide him straight into the A tier. Virgil van Dijk, straight up a joke of a centre-back. Arguably the best centre-back in uh, in this game. He's just amazing when it comes down to putting in tackles. I was looking at my recording software, just making sure you guys can actually see it. But yeah, Virgil van Dijk, S tier. Love Virgil this year. Lengthy took him to a new level. I don't think if lengthy was a thing, Virgil van Dijk would be good, this good. No shot. Not with his acceleration, but because of lengthy being a thing, yeah, he's a whole, whole new level. Spinozola. Now, he is a fast fullback, so catching up the players is not an issue at all. He doesn't feel great on the ball. His tackling ability is better than what the card actually says because of his reach in game, and his physical presence ain't really all that. He's an okay fullback, but I definitely will say he's not better than Wambazaka or on the same level as Wambazaka. He isn't on the same level as someone like the lot either. So I am going to put Spinozola in the B plus tier. Marquinhos, disgustingly good center back. You guys know Marquinhos this year is the real deal. 100% he's in form, is going to go into the S tier. Would his gold card go in the S tier? Yeah, I like Marquinhos a lot this year. Uh, Frimpong. The thing of Frimpong, right? You look at this guy's stats and you're thinking to yourself, hmm, okay, he kind of looks like a pace merchant. But I'm telling you guys, in game, Frimpong is more than just pace. His tackling is unreal. Physical presence, he has it in game. It feels like he goes up to players and somehow like really pushes them out the way. It seems like he's always fighting to get the ball back. I like Fringpong this year. I'm going to put him A+. plus. Oh, now this is a fullback that I am not a huge fan of. I know some people do like Des this year. I do like how he can play multiple positions. He play right back, uh, right wing back, left back. And I think he can also play right mid as well. I like that. I like that... Uh, I like that variety. You know, you can play him either side and you can get him on chemistry. I just didn't feel like defensively, he didn't really offer much. Like physical presence, he hasn't got that completely. Uh, going into tackles, it always felt like when he went into tackles, the ball just bounced. The ball would just bounce straight back to my opponent. He has got, though, a lot of pace and he does feel nice on the ball. It just, I don't think he's as good or on the same level as Wambazaka. I don't think he's as good or on the same level as someone like Klaus either. I am going to put Dest in the B plus tier. Carl Walker, 100%. No question about it, boys. S tier card. Ferland Mendy, S tier card. Oh, another one. Theo Hernandez, S tier card. Three S tier cards back to back to back. You guys know these three are just absolutely broken this year. Uh, Delict. This is after the upgrade. So he has obviously his gold card, which is an 85 overall. He got the inform, but he also got another upgrade because they won three games yeah three games out of the next eight so that's why he got another upgrade yesterday uh delict is a very solid center back when going for tackles do you know what he reminds me of he reminds me a lot of scrinia like goes in very strong has a really nice physical presence and he's uh quite fast as well because you know they can get lengthy so i told you guys at the start lengthy is going to get mentioned in a crazy crazy amount of time so yeah delict being lengthy as well is super nice i definitely will say he's on the same level as someone like Skriniar. Ronaldo? Ronaldo, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's how you say it. He can play centre-back as well, which is actually kind of nice. Him in a centre-back position is something uh, I do prefer than him in a full-back position. I don't think he's an amazing full-back. And in a centre-back position, I don't think he's outstanding there. I'll be honest, I'm taking Klosterman over him. I'm taking a Kanji over him. I'm taking Saliba over him. Stats-wise, he looks good. But when you play with him in-game, I was super, super disappointed. So I am going to put him into that B+. Lacroix, comfortable A+. Tier. 
comfortable. Louis Lacroix, right? His pace is just a joke, and he goes in very strong in the tackles. You do notice the reactions on Lacroix sometimes be a little bit of an issue, but it's not a massive issue. Lacroix is just a comfortable A plus tier. Kim Min J. Ooh. Kim Min J, I reviewed. Right at the start when he came out, he was the first Serie A player of the month. I'm pretty sure it's the only one as well. Yeah, there's not been another one. Uh, super overpriced. Kim Min J goes in strong, has a nice physical uh, presence as well. Pace is good. As I told you guys in a review, he's not as good as Skriniar. He just isn't. Skriniar was way, way cheaper, and he is better. So I am going to put Kim Min J in the A tier. Jordi Alba. Jordi Alba just doesn't offer much on defense, does he? He hasn't got too much of a defensive presence. He feels all right on the ball, and he has got a decent amount of pace. I don't think Jordi Alba deserves to go any higher than the B plus tier. Gosins. I don't mind Gosins, but I don't think he is an amazing fullback. I think after the upgrade, now we're talking. But at this current moment, I'm taking Realm over him. I'm taking Navas. I'm taking players like Frimpong as well. I'm going to put Gosins in the A tier. Rota knockout Bremer. Now he is not going to get a single upgrade. Juventus are doing really bad in the Champions League. They just lost, I believe it was 4-3 to Benfica. I don't think they can even qualify to the knockout. So they are fighting for a Europa League spot right now. This Bremer card though, with no upgrade at all, is still good. Just straight up. He is a great tackler. His physical presence in that centre-back position is insane. He has lengthy and everything. I am going to put Bremer in the A plus tier. I think it's Gert Ruder or is it Jert Ruder? It might not even be one of them, but just let me know how you pronounce it in a comment section. You guys know pronunciations obviously aren't my strong point, but I do like how this guy performs in a centre-back position. In a right-back position, honestly, he isn't too bad there because you give him the architect chem style, which means he becomes lengthy and he is fast in that position. It's just centre-back position is where I did prefer him. I am going to put him in the A tier. I don't think he's Bremer good. I don't think he's Benucci good. But I think he's like a strong A tier card. Uh, Akuna feels incredible in the ball. But pace is definitely an issue. There are better fullbacks than Akuna. Wamzaka is better. Uh, Reese James is better. Kalaus is better. He is going to go in the B plus tier. Kula Bali. Joke. There's no way of putting your boys. He's an absolute joke. I love Koulibaly this year. I think he's one of the best centre backs in this game, and I am gonna put him in the S tier. Kempembe. Kempembe is a hard one, you know, because I like Kempembe, but I don't love Kempembe. I think Adem and Atal is better. I definitely think Tomori is better. I think Kunde is better. Varane is better. Koulibaly is better. Marquinhos is better. I like Kempembe, but I don't think. He's out of this world this year. I genuinely don't. I think I don't think he was the Kemp well, I don't think he is the Kempembe from last year. Let's just put it that way. So Kempembe is gonna go into the A plus tier. I know some people would definitely disagree with that. It's just I don't think he's on this S tier level. I just don't. Uh Carver Howe, all right, fullback, but doesn't offer you a crazy amount. I guess his tackling ability is nice, but Reese James is better. Wamzak is better. Carver Howe is going to go in the B plus tier. Moments tell us. Now, when I did a review, I did like him in the fullback position, but I liked him way better in the midfield. As an attacking centre mid, Telles was the real deal. Now, I did say uh, as a fullback in the review, I'm pretty sure I did say he was an A tier fullback. Now, looking at the fullbacks we have in the A tier, Telles is better. Telles is better than Reese James. Telles is better than Dodo. Telles is better than Delot. Telles is better than uh, a player like Traore as well. He's better than Klaus. So I am going to put Telles in the A plus tier. But just like that, we have ourselves our final defenders tier list. I didn't even know Telles was the last one. Let's quickly scan her through this just to make sure I'm happy with everyone. Everyone in the S tier stays. I don't think anyone goes down from the S tier. A plus, the card I'm really looking at is Kempembe. A lot of people are going to mention Orojo as well. I know a lot of you guys love Orojo. I really do like him as well. As I said, for the price, you cannot go wrong. For the price, he's an absolute bargain. It's just, I don't think he's a dare Tomori. I don't think he's PK Ramos good. I don't think he's that good. Uh, a plus T, I think he's very solid. I guess you could argue Kempembe could go up. I guess if there was a tier right in between, maybe Kempembe would slide there. But but I'm going to just keep him there. I don't think he's S tier. Uh, a tier, I think everyone stays in the A tier. And B plus, yeah, I think... Everyone stays in the B+. The card I'm really looking at is Des. I know some people do enjoy him this year. It's just I wasn't like a huge fan of him. So I'm going to keep him in the B+. Tier. Now I'm going to give you guys my top three centre-backs and top three full-backs this year. 
So, starting off with the centre-backs, Virgil van Dijk, number one. There's no question about it. Virgil van Dijk is a joke this year. He's my number one. Uh, second? Oh, second is hard. You know what? Second, I'm going to go Tomori. Love Tomori. I think I've used Tomori for at least over 300 games. At least. He's in both of my teams. I do uh, switch around my defensive line, though, on my RTG a good amount. But Tomori has been always one of my most favourite centre-backs this year. So, yeah, Tomori second. Uh, third, I'm going to go Koulibaly. Yeah, Koulibaly is a beast this year. I hate playing up against him. It just feels like Koulibaly is there every single second. If you have a partnership of Virgil van Dijk and Koulibaly, you have yourself a very, very strong centre-back duo. Let me know, by the way, what your centre-back duo is right now. And if you're playing three at the back, let me know what three defenders or three centre-backs you are using. So yeah, top three centre-backs, Virgil van Dijk, Tomori, and Koulibaly. Fullbacks. Fullbacks is a hard one. There's so many good fullbacks, but I'm going to go Carl Walker number one. I know that might surprise a few people. I know that might surprise, but Ku no, not Kuba, sorry. Uh, Carl Walker is a joke. He is incredible. And there's a reason this guy goes for the price he goes for. Like, he is amazing this year. Surprisingly, he doesn't even feel bad on the ball either. You see, other years, you just see Carl Walker as a defensive fullback. This year, you don't, you don't need to see him as that because he actually feels pretty decent on the ball going forward. I love Carl Walker, so I'm going to put him number one. Uh, second, I'm going to go Cancelo. Cancelo is the real deal this year, as expected. He is an absolute beast. And in the final spot, I am going to go... There's so many uh, so many players that could go final spot. I'm going to go Ferdinand Mendy. I think Ferdinand Mendy this year is better than Theo. I think defensively, Theo is better. But going forward, Ferland Mendy is so much better. The thing is, right, you guys know the press after possession loss tactic right now is super OP. It is disgusting how many players press you, okay? So having a player like Ferland Mendy to, you know, to dribble, to feel actually nice on the ball, trying to turn players off, like while getting pressed is so, so nice compared to someone like Theo Hernandez, which feels okay on the ball, but definitely has those moments that he can do like a, a weird falling over animation or like a weird touch at a, an interesting angle. So Ferland Mendy, for me, is just slightly above Theo. As I said, defensively, Theo is better. But going forward, Ferland Mendy 100% is that guy. And with how to press off, press off the possession loss is a thing this year, I am taking Ferland over Theo. But yeah, that is going to be it for the Defenders tier list. I hope you guys did enjoy the video. If you did, make sure to leave a like, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.